Okay, what's up everyone? It's your boy Henrik here, and uh, today we're going to be learning 13 reasons why Eugene V. Debs is the best president we never had. You're probably asking yourself right now, who's Eugene V. Debs? I don't remember talking about him. Well, I'll tell you about him right now. He's this handsome fella right here. Eugene V. Debs was born on November 5th, 1855 in Terre Haute, Indiana. He went to public school until the age of 14 when he began working, becoming a locomotive fireman. In 1875, he would go on to organize the Brotherhood of Locomotive Firemen, of which he was voted National Secretary and Treasurer. This was how he began to develop his skills as an orator and leader. He entered politics in 1879 as a Democratic candidate for city clerk and was elected twice by an overwhelming majority. He was elected to the Indiana State Assembly four years later. I mean, if you're looking for a reason to put this guy in a Hall of Fame, you should put down that he was a hard worker for his whole life. That, you know what? That, that's reason number one. Number one. Reason number one is that the dude was a hard worker his whole life. All right, number seven. He was a firm reformer, even for himself. During the 1880s, Debs' ideas began to shift. He began with very conservative ideas, as demonstrated when he ordered his union members to report to work during the Knights of Labor strike against the Southern Railroad in 1885. However, in 1888, he became involved in the strike against the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad. This convinced him that craft organization was hindering the efforts to secure fair wages and conditions. He also began arguing that concentrated corporate power was overshadowing the political rights and economic opportunity of the American population. In 1893, he organized the American Railway Union, the ARU. The ARU would go on to organize a strike against the Pullman Company of Chicago. This 1894 strike proved to be critical in the evolution of Debs' philosophy. The railroad management and federal authorities broke the strike, which led to Debs and several other activists being sentenced to jail time. This convinced Debs that trade unions were not enough to combat the power of capital. Debs looked everywhere for answers, and in the end he found... SOCIALISM! <laughs> Alright, so another reason to love this guy is the fact that he represented minority opinions. The 20th century came and Debs rose through the rank of the Socialist Party, eventually becoming their nominee for five separate presidential elections, the last of which he spent behind bars. Why was he in jail again? Oh, we'll get to that in a minute. The most successful of these presidential bids was in 1912, in a four-way race with Woodrow Wilson, William Howard Taft, and Theodore Roosevelt. He received 6% of the vote. Even while he wasn't campaigning, he was constantly traversing the nation, running here and there all around the square to give speeches and organize events. The most influential of all his speeches was his Canton, Ohio speech, in which he compared American involvement in World War I to feudal wars in which the wealthy lords would send the, quote, poor ignorant serfs to kill and die for their cause. This is the speech that landed him in jail for 10 years for violating the Sedition Act. So why was Debs seen as such an influential figure in American history? He never came close to winning a race, and he represented a school of thought that was very unpopular at the time. Well, Debs was an envelope pusher who was firm and uncompromising on all his values. Debs was, in fact, so extreme that he made the more moderately-minded labor reformers look far more appealing, paving the way for progress in the country. He also strongly represented a minority ideology, encouraging further discussion in the nation over the way it is structured. So please, I ask of you to consider an honorary position for Eugene Debs in the Progressive University Hall of Fame. Thank you.